Chapter 11 The Outsiders Several moons had passed by without incident. During this period I had not heard from Kahaloa, nor Lei's family, nor the celestial one. Lei and I had grown closer. The rains were soon to come. The Makahiki festival would be arriving. The summer had been marked only with peaceful and relaxing memories. One morning I walked into Lei's halley. Our midwife was talking to Lei. Good morning, I said. The law demands Lei be separated from me at this stage of her pregnancy, but we are overlooking this tradition at my bidding. Good morning, my love. We shared our breath. I was coming back from my morning swim and saw these. I pulled from behind my back key flowers. I picked them for you. I dropped the bouquet of pink flowers on Lei's table. Thank you, I love those, Lei said. I know. How are you doing? Wonderful. Where is Hyone and Luana? Lei asked. My women are very close. Hyone and Luana are taking Kaikai Kai and the other women down to the shore. They are collecting food. I'll go, Lei stated. She erected herself. Easy, my love. I need to move. You will at the right time. I will not. Our midwife added that Lei would benefit. Lei was still several moons away from the birth of our first child. I will order Ao Ao to accompany you. I heard the woman calling out for Lei. Give her some time. She is dressing, I shouted. I stood and showed Lei in my back. I went outside and told them all to protect Lei and make sure she stays a safe distance from the shoreline. Ao Ao agreed to walk with them in case of an emergency. So the group left. The whole time Lei was gone, I thought about her. Lei and I have come so far together. I rested on my bed. I dozed off to sleep. Tonight, I thought, we will eat and relax as usual. I was happy. I had found peace. And it comes in a petite size with an endlessly pretty smile. My eyes closed and I drifted off to sleep. While asleep, I heard the faint voice of Hyoni screaming my name. It was distant. I heard it again. Louder and louder, the screams of several people grew. I shot my eyes open. Makale! I dashed outside in reaction. What happened? I recognized it was my women, and their countenances expressed something terrible. Kahaloa! 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 Hyoni and Kaikai and Luana were screaming. They were all hysterical. Lei was gone. Kahaloa! Where is Lei? What happened? My heart beat faster, as I realized Ao Ao and Lei were not amongst them. He stole her, Kai Kai said. I felt sick. Stolen? What does that mean? My eyes wandered over the faces, but Lei's face was still absent from the group. You lie, I said out of disbelief. Kahaloa stole Lei, Hione said. Where? What? Ao Ao was with you. Eva ran up and joined us. We were down at the beach. Hyone was interrupted by Luana stammering. I glanced back at the trail and was confused. Why Lei had still not yet arrived. I heard Kahaloa's voice. I looked up and looking down at us was Kahaloa, Kai, Maoloa, Ho'opae, and Aloi Pu'a's men. Lei was sitting on the rocks, looking at us. Hyone then yelled. Saliva was coming out of her mouth. Hearing their account frightened me. Then what happened? Aho Aho was there as protection. Hione continued. I saw Kahaloa run towards Lei. She sat there and didn't move. As he ran closer, she stood up. He grabbed Lei, Luana hysterically said, speaking about the experience awakened more trauma. Lei tried to fight off his advances. Kai came down and tied her legs up like a pig. It was so sick. Lei was helpless and screaming for Ao Ao. What happened to Ao Ao? They sliced his throat open. Maoloha and Kahaloa did. Why were you not there? I vividly imagined this act. Hione stuffed her sobbing face into her hands. Kaikai Kai was staring at the summit of Mauna Kea. She was in shock. His eyes, Kaikai Kai said unexpectedly. What about them? Whose eyes? They were so wide. He looked like a savage male pig. Kaikai Kai was attacked by Kai. 
Luana said to me. My legs started to wobble. I felt my head drift away. Possible. Where is Lee? I screamed ever so loudly. Under my anger was the silent voice of a helpless man. Where is she? I roared at Hione. I threw her damp hands off her wet face. She looked at me and attempted to hug me. Where is my woman and my child? I screamed, because I could not undo his injury. Thinking of the other life in Lei made my heart rate thunder. I wanted instant retribution. They carried her off like a war trophy, Luana said. Hearing this enraged me. I looked at Lei's Halle. I panicked. Is she alive? I roared at Luana and Hione. She is. Lee in the midst of those bandits must be waiting for me. The discovery of this act brought out a primitive emotion in me. I wanted to drink Kahaloa's blood and use his skull as my new waste container. I raced up to Poopua. I informed him and his acolytes. Gather my other warriors and return to my temple. Wait here until I return. I am pulling Kenohi to my aid. Poopua responded immediately by jumping up and rushing towards his weapons cache. He would rouse my warriors. I raced to Paupu'ulu's dwelling. Here with him was Kahioli too. The two learned of the tragedy. While standing without clothes in my Kalo field, after the two dressed in their war loincloths, the three of us raced to the compound of High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu. I was going to demand more warriors accompany me to the impending slaughter. Why not gather your warriors now? Kahioli asked as we ran. Popua should be with us, Papa Ulu said. Because he is gathering my warriors, soon we will be running as one force towards Kahaloa's warriors. I looked down and saw Kahioli's long legs spreading with each stride over the ground. I looked at his face. Kahioli was not breaking a sweat. He was not breathing heavy. I want more warriors. I said to Kahioli and Paupu'ulu between breaths. As Kahioli paced ahead, I thought of bringing down my wrath on Kahaloa. Then let us run there faster. I want to run my pahua through Maoloha, Kahioli said. And mine through Kai, Paupu'ulu said. Kahioli sprinted faster and faster. I ran faster. Paupu'ulu, despite his age, kept up with us. We soon arrived at the royal residence. Here, in Kanaloa Pulehu's court, Royal children were running around each other. I gained access to speak with the high chief. I was told he was with his counselors. I ordered my men to wait for me as I raced up the stone steps. I was going to intrude into his temple halle. As I approached, his dozens of guards looked at me. They released the cord held between the entrance. I entered. I prostrated until being recognized. His council was discussing the farming production in an area with little rainfall. They stopped their talk. What do you want, Makule? I stood. You look insane, High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu said once he looked into my eyes. I am going to kill Kahaloa right now. I want a dozen of your best warriors. He did not answer. He looked at the elderly clan leaders and back at me. On his lap were two dogs. He mildly pet them with both hands, as if their pleasure was pertinent. What happened? He lackadaisically asked. My woman was stolen by Kahaloa. My woman lay of the Ehu clan. She was tied up by Kahaloa and Ho'opae and his men. They stole my woman and killed my friend. Do you understand what I am facing? I will unleash fire upon his people and his land. I bit down on the itching in my throat. I coughed. My mouth was as dry as sand in the Kau district. Long, stagnant tears were on the verge of flowing. I sneezed to suppress the tears that could run. I was showing only confidence before this circle of judgmental high chiefs. High Chief Kanalo Pulehu looked around at his counselors. This is not your high chief's responsibility, an elderly high chief said as he sat comfortably on his mat. A young man was fanning his elderly and weathered skin. You do not understand. I have a dozen of my private warriors I am taking. We will march down there and slaughter them all. I want your help. May I receive the assistance the Celestial One promised I will always have at my disposal? 
High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu tapped his fingers on his mat. His mouth opened. I don't think you need Kenohi. But I am protected by the Celestial One. I am permitted to get anything. Just then, Kanaloa Pulehu's messenger came barging into our meeting. Kanaloa Pulehu jumped. The two dogs leaped off his lap. This man with facial hair prostrated. The two little dogs barked and barked. High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu then ignored me and leaned back on his cushions. Arise. The dogs stopped barking to lick their noses and returned to their master's lap. My High Chief, I am very apologetic for entering. A messenger is going to arrive shortly with news. I was at my station when a runner arrived from Kealakekua. The royal messenger exclaimed. This man was sweating and had obviously run a great distance. What is this about? The high chiefs also demanded to know more information. It has to do with Kai Ikilani. Makale, you are to wait here. Since you possess the one sacred god, this concerns you. As for granting you my finest warriors, I will decide shortly. Immediately after the royal messenger left, the royal runner from Kealakekua arrived. He entered and prostrated. What news do you have? My high chief, the most urgent and upsetting news. The celestial one has killed Ka Ikilani. I froze when I heard this. Only what this man said mattered. He continued, Ka Ikilani had a secret lover. Hea Kekoa. Hea Kekoa has been intimate with our high chiefess. Apparently, he took his men and paddled after the court. This man tracked down Ka Ikilani and the celestial one discovered this. What? High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu asked. Murmuring abounded. The royal runner continued, Ka Ikilani is now dead. Ka Ikilani is dead. One elderly High Chief asked in disbelief. This is an outrage, another said, repositioning his posterior. We war with Lono, another shouted. We war, another High Chief said. A feeling of uncertainty entered everyone. They looked at each other and looked back at High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu. I was surprised to hear this. The runner gave more details. Her head was smashed. I remembered her vibrant and pretty nature. And now our High Chiefess is dead. That is like my head and yours and all the chief's heads being hit, High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu stated. I stepped back and remained silent. This news is important, but all I could think about was Lei. What sources told you of this? Another high chief asked. Hauna's messenger claims this. Just then another royal runner arrived and prostrated. Arise. News has arrived. The high chiefess Kaikilani is dead. Her sweet face and pretty smile, smashed by the fists of that coward. The same elderly high chief snarled. If Lono believes he rules me in my district, he is wrong, Kaneloa Pulehu said. Never did I think the company here would speak like this about the Celestial One. I no longer acknowledge his rule over me, another high chief growled. It better not be seen in my district. Kaikilani was the greatest gift her father has given our people. He speaks not for my god any more, the youngest-looking high chief said. Another feeling entered everyone, which is absolute denial of the Celestial One's authority. Do you know what you are saying? One of the high chiefs asked. Yes, Lono's actions are unforgivable. He will enjoy no impunity, a high chief said. Let it be announced from the green sands of Kau up to the black sands of why, Pio? Lono will be greeted with my pahoa, High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu said. Let us receive more information, a High Chief said. High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu looked around at all the High Chiefs. Kanaloa Pulehu ordered all personal comments to desist. The High Chief ceased speaking. This displayed their loyalty towards Kanaloa Pulehu and not Lono. I am calling forth a meeting. Notify my brothers. Notify all the high chiefs immediately. 
We will meet at the state temple tonight before sunset. Those chiefs who do not show may be considered enemies of the land. Choose your spoken words carefully. Lono has loyal members here, one of the high chiefs said. All of you are going to march with me to the state temple. There we will remain throughout the night. Alert Ma Inui. Have my priests begin communicating with my god. I knew this was a bad moment to request his assistance. The social atmosphere was on the verge of something big, but I must go to rescue Lei. I began walking out to find Papa Ulu and Kahiole. Stop that chief! An elderly high chief screamed. The guards blocked my escape. Markole, your issue will wait. First we are to speak to the gods. Kanaloa Pulehu said to me. Have his friends outside depart, the one high chief said. Two guards stepped outside and dismissed. Papuulu and Kahiole. I guess I am slaying Kahalo at the meeting, since weapons are forbidden inside the temple. I'm going to have to kill him with my bare hands. The meeting occurred after the sacred fire was lit. As the sacred fire brightened, drumming commenced. So many chiefs were here, adorned with key-leaf necklaces. This island is massive in size, thus I recognized only a few of the chiefs. We sat in a triangular shape. I, Chief Kanalua Kua'ana, was standing in front of me. His tall and dark-skinned frame was pacing back and forth. High Chief Kanalua Pulehu whispered something into Kanalua Kua'ana's priest's ear. Then High Chief Kanalua Kua'ana's priest let out a shriek. This gave the privilege of speaking to High Chief Kanaloa Kua'ana. He rubbed his Niho Palaoa as the priest's wide-opened mouth finally closed. Then there was just the noise of embers popping. We have traitors amongst us, Kanaloa Kua'ana yelled at full volume. Three guards came forward. Ole, you are to stand up and have us look upon you. Ole, a gray-bearded high chief, stood up in the triangle. Those seated near Ole looked upon him. Ole stood motionless before Kanaloa Kuana. Then the crowd of chiefs sitting slid away from the charging guards. Ole was clasped all around and escorted away. Aho of Waimanu Valley! Kanaloa Kuana shouted. Again a moment later fresh guards appeared from the shadows of the night, came forward to arrest Haho. This obese high chief was removed. Luakoa of Kavai Hai. Luakoa was then taken up at the wrists. I think you men all know what happens with traitors. Kanaloa Kuaana roared in a drastic and dark yet desperate tone. I looked upon him. The Bahoa, he continued. The high chiefs broke into applause and cheers. Some were weeping with joy. High chief Kanaloa Kulehu then walked up and shared the breath of life with his brother. Two looked upon the crowd. I looked upon Kanaloa Kuaana and Kanaloa Pulehu. Their countenance was one of relief. The conspirators were tied with rope. Too bad Kahaloa is not amongst them, I thought. I then looked for Kahaloa. No chance at finding him here tonight. Kana blew the conch horn of Kanaloa Pulehu. This gathered the loyal chiefs together. We followed the prisoners a short distance down to the shore. Kanaloa Pulehu's constables buried the ten former high chiefs in sand. Haho and Luakoa and the others were up to their hips in sand. Slowly a high chief leaned down and picked up one stone from the stack. His back erected and he gazed at the prisoners. He held the heavy stone proudly. The immobilized prisoners looked upon this high chief. This one high chief then pitched his stone. It soared through the air. The skull of Lua Ko was hit with his projectile. A resulting cracking sound of hard objects colliding hit our ears. Another high chief saw this and repeated what he observed. A third chief saw this and copied the second high chief. I watched as the crowd's penchant for killing became contagious. The first stones flew with little energy. It took no time for the mob to throw a volley of stones with intensity. Each individual imitated the highest degree his bloodthirsty neighbor's action. 
a stone landed in my hand. I mimicked my brethren. To all of us the guilt of these high chiefs was undeniable. After their deaths we returned to our conclave in the temple. Later that night, High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu called out, Makale, you are to come forward. I stood up from my prostrating position. A terrifying feeling spread down my back. I glanced at the altar. I looked upon the naked bodies of the rebellious chiefs. The blood and sand had been washed off before returning them into the temple. They were traitors. They were rebels. And I am loyal to my High Chief. Again I heard, Makale. My confidence scattered like an Olapa leaf in the wind. My legs shook like Olapa boughs blasted by wind. Kanaloa Kuana's voice was powerful. I stood before him. Everyone looked at me. The chief who lived beyond the horizon. Kanaloa Kuana said aloud. I stepped back, giving myself a little more distance from him. Kanaloa Pulehu added, You have knowledge of new weapons, clever weapons. I rubbed my hands together from being nervous. I do. With what Lono told me, we can take over this land. You are to make these weapons, and we will use them against Lono. I saw how greedy he was to possess such power. I can't. You can't or you will not? I cannot. Impossible. Lono told me of weapons that can kill men without touching them. I know. You have no iron. Iron is the first... Kanaloa Pulehu interrupted me. Well... Your god then belongs to me. Makole, your loyalty will be rewarded. Do you swear to side with me? Kanaloa Kuaana said. Yes, I want to be a major part of the new government. You make us weapons, and any wish will be granted, Kanaloa Pulehu shouted. Return to the congregation. Kuaiva, Kanaloa Pulehu's high priest said to me. I crawled back into the crowd. High Chief Kanaloa Pulehu and High Chief Kanaloa Kuaana spoke to their warriors. After some time, Kanaloa Pulehu shouted out to the congregation, Ma'anui is taking men down to destroy the coconut trees in Keolakekua. I beseech all of you to join them. Lono has gone too far. He has done nothing but taken. Taken our pigs, taken our mats, taken our canoes. Agree with me, brothers, right now. Already the masses were influenced. Kanaloa Pulehu continued, The blessed life of Kaikilani is the last thing he will ever take. The congregation applauded. I was pleased to hear a new standard of living was awaiting us, one which made us feel justified, one which made all of our lives less strenuous. The dawning of our rule was approaching. However, I needed to escape. I am sneaking out at the right moment. Once at my temple, my plan to lead men on a hunt for Kahaloa will be implemented. As Ma Inui gathered, a dozen other men I saw my chance. I overheard Pe'elua saying, If Lono returns, he will be in for a rude awakening. I remained silent and let the others talk. I cannot wait to chop down his coconut trees, one warrior shouted. Those warriors, hearing this, excitedly chattered about their approval of the mission. This will be easy. He is disliked so much they may already be vandalized. The warriors were running around and dancing. The sound of a drum beating commenced. Kanaloa Kuaana was beating the war drum. He stopped as more human bodies were tossed onto the altar fire like fuel. As the warriors and chiefs looked upon this altar in a thrilled silence, I took off into the blackness of night. A thick, hot smoke cloud had provided the distraction. I would return at dawn, the next morning. My plan was to find Kahaloa before then. After strangling him, I will bring his corpse and those corpses of the others to this temple. I will bring them under the guise of slaying traitors. If war does break out, this will bolster my position even greater. I raced back to my palace. The warm night air was different. As I ran, I recognized the opportunity to advance in social status by siding with Kanaloa Kuaana and Kanaloa Pulehu. I sprinted over the crest and noticed a group of men had congregated on my palace grounds. It was the career warriors of the Celestial One. I could notice who they were because of their outfits. These are elite warriors, far more dangerous than anything else alive. They are waiting for me. I saw Eva, 
I crept up to meet him. I kept my eyes on the warriors outside my eating holly. My chief. I did not acknowledge him yet. I continued walking up to him. My chief. A royal messenger has been here all night waiting for you. Hearing this frightened me. I just left the state temple with Kanaloa Pulehu. I swallowed my fear and asked, What does he want? You did not tell me. My neck stretched. My eyes were focusing on the warrior's weapons. What do you think? Eva quietly asked. Did they ask about Lei? No. Did they ask where I was? Yes. I said you did not inform me prior to leaving. Did you tell them about Kahaloa? No, my chief. Good. Where were you? Paupoulu said you were at the high chief's temple earlier. Much has happened since you left. I am sure you heard about the high chiefess. I have. I did not mention the sudden overthrow of power that I witnessed. I continued, Have they spoken with Pao'o'ulu or Ao'o'o? Do not ask me, Eva replied. I looked at him in the hopes honesty was rolling forth from his mouth. Why are they here, my chief? Does this have to do with my high chiefess being stolen? I will learn why they are here. I am not wasting any additional moments. We are making haste to Kahaloa's palace. I left our high chief's ceremony to slay Kahaloa. Why did the high chief hold a ceremony? I will tell you some other time. Anyway, if they are here under friendly pretenses, they will accompany us for some genuine vengeance. Eva looked at the guards. They were looking at us. Laughter and voices pulsed out from my eating holly. Hurry, gird your warloin cloth. I walked toward the warriors. That is what I want to hear. Eva briskly stepped away as he wrung his hands in anticipation of the bloodshed. I smiled at Eva's reaction. I raced past these warriors standing guard. I bravely entered through my entranceway. There he is, a familiar voice said. It was La Anui. He was back on the island. I am sure you are returning from a fruitful meeting amongst dear friends, La Anui asked. I looked around and saw Kaohe and a dozen elite warriors sitting on my floor. Next to La Anui was Po Pua. He did not acknowledge me. I returned my gaze to La Anui. I was. I went to petition my high chief for using his warriors in a vendetta fight with Kahaloa. My woman was stolen by him. I am sure Po Pua informed you all. I looked at Poopua. He was refusing to speak. Also, I noticed cups of my ava were being consumed. Your woman, La Anui said in a sarcastic tone. A few warriors chuckled. Kaohe let out a whistle. You should never have left our court. Since you fled, you clearly have fallen. You see, Lei, who you speak of, may be locked to your memories. However, in reality, Lei is Uia Nui Kao Manamana's woman. As La Anui spoke, I realized he was squatting on my mat. I will cut down, Uia, and you are on my mat. I raised my voice. I moved forward with my voice projecting and flung my right foot into him. My upper back arched as all my energy rushed into his chest. My reaction of kicking him went sour. Somehow a warrior grabbed me. I was on the floor before La Anui. What is the meaning of this? Why are you all here? I snarled. I was immobilized to the point only my tongue and jaw could move. La Nui jumped up onto his feet. He stomped over to me. Your god and Feather Cloak are coming with me. You are ordered to follow me back to Keolake Kua. La Nui was in my face. No, you can't do this. In fact, I need your men. I am going to kill Kahaloa right now. All the warriors laughed. Kahoe exclaimed how audacious I was. Another stated the inopportune timing for my request. Laonui whispered, You are going to speak with Hauna. He slid his pahoa over my neck. Now? I sarcastically asked, with my teeth still being crunched together. His warriors laughed again, finding me amusing. Now, you barbarian! Bring a traveling basket full of clothing and anything else for traveling. The force on my body was released. I stood up on my feet. I could not ask anything else. Lao Anui looked at me with disdain. Unbelievable, he said. His warrior's eyes were fixed on me. Through my wall I heard Hione's voice. Makale, are you safe? La Anui and Kauhe looked upon me. Yes, I'll be outside soon, I answered. 
I began gathering my belongings. Why do I need items for traveling? La Nui only stared at me with snub eyes. After I had my belongings in my weaved traveling basket, I stated I was ready. La Nui ordered my feather cloak to be taken. My image of God, given to me by the Celestial One, lay covered in bark cloth. Poopua stood up and handed it to me. Why have you not said anything? Pua Pua remained silent. Carry it, La Nui ordered. Outside, I walked by Hione and Luana and Eva. Eva, take care of my women. I will be back. Where are they taking you? Hione screamed. She attempted to get close, but was held back by Kahoe. I have some warriors to remain here. I beg you, I yelled. La Anui looked at his men. Please, I continued pleading. Everyone stopped moving. They all turned around and looked at me because I was being humble in their eyes for the first time. If someone is going to kill them, someone is going to kill them, La Anui casually said. I was shoved forward down the path towards Paupu'ulu's dwelling. At my beach, we entered into a double-hulled canoe and embarked. La Anui sat down on mats as roars took us far out to sea. While out in the quiet blackness, I asked, Are you going to have me killed? The ocean breeze was blowing past my ears. Why Hauna calls for you, I do not know. If I have my god, what is going to happen to Poopua? He is on the altar in your temple as we speak. I knew right away I was being stripped of my title. We made it into Keolakekua Bay. It is time. La Anui said to me. I jumped into the passenger canoe and was rowed towards shore. I was paddled up to the black rocks that hugged the bay. We landed and I was escorted into Hauna's compound. We walked past the large Hau tree. I looked out to my left and saw his beautiful fish ponds. It was a calm night down here in Keolakekua on the surface. This seems familiar, I said in reference to my escorted arrival long ago. You are wrong. This time I would be vindicated for slaying you. I did not respond verbally, but my heart was on fire. We continued walking up the steps. Hauna's guards looked at me. La Anui began speaking to a group of Hauna's warriors. Of these men, one entered the Hale of Hauna. He returned and spoke to La Anui. La Anui came forward. Come now. The cord stretching between Hauna's doorframe was released. It fell to the ground. This meant I had permission to enter Hauna's Hale. We walked into his Hale. There was a single burning kukui nut. I disrobed in his presence and knelt on a knee. You have heard of the tragedy? Hauna asked, as Lanui exited. Yes. I understand rebels are uprising. My mind was not on this subject. The political shift was second only to Lei's retrieval. Did you know Lei was stolen? A whole night has gone by now with her. With her. I stopped and could not find words to describe my thoughts. I did not want to think about Kahaloa and Lei together. Please let me go. Release me. I do not want any involvement with some civil unrest. I was hoping my allegiance given to Kanaloa Kuaana was a secret. I continued, I want to kill Kahaloa and his men and live in peace with my new family. You poor, poor being. Rebels are mounting, war is being envisioned, and the woman you stole has been stolen from you in secession. Hauna's parlance is so monotone. Why am I here? You will survive this upcoming storm. The gods, I have been told, do have something planned for you, and in all my life I have never seen the gods bless a man with such fortune. What? You are going into the Divine Mountains, Makwale. Kalua will be your source of food and provide you with a bed. Kalua is my personal feather-gatherer. Collecting birds? I refuse. I am not going anywhere until I have lay. A warrior jumped out from the dark. He struck me above my navel. Pain spread through my body. Pain was terrible. I lay on the ground. The inside of my body was in agony. The warrior stepped back into the dark. You are going to take the role the gods have given you. I want Lei. She is my woman, I strained to speak. I told you not to disrupt Lei's life. You failed to listen, and now... Well, 
Staying alive and suffering is your fate. Do not worry, you will survive. You will survive and take with you the torment of a second loss. I listened to his words. How does he know this is the second woman to have vanished from my side? Hauna continued, This is Opu Kahaia. The warrior who struck me stepped forward in the yellow light. He put his hand out to help me onto my feet. I ignored him and stood on my own. I wanted to strike him back. Opu Kahaia and his men will be taking you to the Hale of Kalua. Why am I to collect bird feathers? How about the hairs on Kaloa's head be collected? That I can do. Opu Kahaia looked upon Hauna as if requesting to strike me again. Makale, I cannot, for the first time, predict where your life will go. All I know is that if you listen to me this time and remain my bird feather collector, you will survive. That's not what I want. If you return to man's land on your own design, Makale, you will be sacrificed on the altar of the Celestial One. This is incredible. I want to rescue my woman. The only entity rescued tonight will be your god. Now hand it to me. I looked down at the object wrapped in bark cloth. I dropped down and waddled forward. I raised the image up towards Hauna with my head bowed. I reluctantly relinquished the god into Hauna's hands. Opu Kahaia then grabbed my left arm and removed my Niho Palioa. You will remain in the Divine Mountains until further news is delivered. Those were the last words of Hauna. Opu Kahaia then led me outside of the foyer. I was finally without rank. All my physical goods signifying status were gone. I looked at Opu Kahaia. Let me go and I will give you many women. <laughs>